in the previous video, uh, we have shown how to compute the Durbin Watson to test the independence of the observations. So, the next assumption is to show the homoscedisticity plot. And to do that, we're going to need the predicted and the residual error again. So, for us to get the predicted value, we're going to need the regression line. So, select the two columns for the data set, including the labels. Uh, go to insert, recommended charts, and then all charts. Select the XY scatter plot, this one, and select OK. Go to thick cross, trend line, and then select more options to show or display the equation on the chart. So after selecting this box, we can now use the regression equation shown here in the scatter plot. So we have equal sign, that's uh, 2.8092 times the value of x here, which is 64, plus 63.442, enter, and we have the predicted value. And to, to copy paste the formula, wait for the thick cross, thick cross on the bottom right of the cell, drag using your mouse, and we have now the formula for, or the values for the predicted column. And to get the residual error, which is just the difference between the actual data uh, value that we have and the predicted value from the regression equation, we just need to get the difference between these two. So 256 minus 243.23, that's 12.67, and we'll do this for the rest of the pairs. All right, and the next thing that we need to do here is to produce a scatter plot by comparing the uh, predicted value, or I mean the the va the value, the independent variable, and uh, the residual error. So to do that, we need to uh, select this column, and then press Control key on your keyboard to select the second column here. Go to Insert and then uh, go to recommended charts and the residual error plot that you see here uh, in the first option should be selected so this is the one that we're going to use search ok or press ok and this is now the scatter plot for us to determine the homoscedisticity of the data set for the interpretation of the plot, uh, the ideal uh, plot uh, area should look like this. So to interpret the residual plot, you need to determine if the residuals form a pattern like this one, like a rectangular pattern for the uh, plots. If the residual values are more or less evenly distributed about the line like uh, this one, uh, then the relationship between x and y is linear and the regression line can be used to make predictions. So this means that the standard deviations of each of the dependent variables must be the same for each value of the independent variable. So um, if your scatter plot looks like this, then we have passed the homoscedisticity uh, test. But in the case of uh, this left figure here, the first figure here, notice that this is like uh, an increasing pattern. So this means that the regression line is not suitable for prediction. Like, likewise with heteroscedisticity, which uh, looks like this. So if we're going to look at our uh, plot here, it's somehow similar to the middle figure, which shows heteroscedisticity, which we don't like to uh, show up in this uh, analysis. But in case this is not yet uh, final, because we can see that uh, we have limited number of pairs here, we just have 10 pairs for independent and dependent variables. So um, what if we're going to add uh, 30 more? Would it change the uh, area for this plot as is? Uh, it's up to you to consider that and uh, for review. And remember that when it comes to these kinds of things and you're using an actual data set from an empirical ex uh, experiment, uh, then it uh, would probably look like this because 
uh, we're get, we're only getting the samples and the, the samples that we are using sometimes is very small that is why it's one of the considerations that we need to check before deciding to use the simple linear regression analysis